Hiram Garcia, a University of Miami grad, the U, is president of production at Seven Bucks Productions. Oh, a top production company owned and founded by his business savvy sister, Danny Garcia, and multi talented Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, by the way, two more University of Miami grads. <laughs> Currently, Hiram is an executive producer of the new hit. TV series Young Rock on Tuesdays on NBC. The show is based on the growing stages of the life of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Such a cool show. You've got a lot of excitement growing up, pro wrestling, Rocky Johnson, a lot of the wrestlers, a lot about Dwayne, his early days, and his beautiful mom. It's such a great show, such a fun show. Digitally, Young Rock is the largest digital launch of an NBC comedy ever. Plus, across multiple generations, Young Rock is the number one comedy in the 2021 season among all broadcast networks with people over 50 years age watching with those under 18 years old, which means it's a family type show, but everyone can watch it. It's so much fun. Hey Hiram, thank you for taking the time. I hope I did all right with all that info. You can correct me on anything there or add to it, but I'd love to talk about Young Rock and the genesis of Young Rock and just starting this whole thing. Absolutely, Jim, and it's, it's always a pleasure to be on, on your show and uh, I love the energy that you, you always do these interviews with and bring to your fans. Look, if we can create content that fires up people as much as you're fired up every day, then we know we're making the right kind of contact, uh, con uh, you know, content. So thank you so much, man, for having me on the show. Yes! <laughs> it's the only way to do things. you got to love and be excited about what you're doing. And I know that's something that you are. And it's just so interesting to, to start this TV show. I'm looking at, I know it's different because this is more reality-based, but it's fun too. But I'm looking at shows like The Wonder Years. Everybody Hates Chris, Young Sheldon, and then the Goldbergs, which the Goldbergs are more reality-based. The other ones, maybe not so much. But Young Rock is reality-based, and it is a fun show. It just the idea of doing this, the concept, the genesis of this, what was some of the thought? And was it thinking about some of those other shows, too? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Jim, you know, it's funny. It, actually, you know, and, you know, all those shows have done well, and we loved them, but... What's nice about this show is it really came from an authentic place, you know, doing the stuff we would do, whether it be with the, the movies we're making or the projects, or even years before when we were traveling around on the wrestling circuit, it would be, you know, me, Dwayne, uh, Brian Gewirtz, uh, who was also, you know, on our TV team and was writing. In any state we'd be at, it never failed, Jim. Somehow, DJ's like, oh, yeah, I remember when I lived here. Oh, yeah, I remember when this happened here. I've never seen one person have more roots in every state of the United States <laughs> than Dwayne, and he would have these amazing stories behind it. And, you know, I think in joking, I would tell him, I'd be like, you know, man, there's a show here, there's a show here. And then as we started to grow our production company and more of these stories would come about, just really uh, kind of recognize that there was an opportunity here to tell a really unique story because I think one of the great things about Dwayne is obviously that he's come from such humble beginnings, right? He's true. He's been there, you know, the seven buck story. He's been there from the bottom, climbed his way to the top with a great team. And to be able to tell these stories that are rooted in just something that I think most people have experienced. Like we've all gone through hard times on whatever path we've gone on um, to get to where we want to go. So to be able to go capture that and then through it all in his life, no matter what was going on in his life, there's always these amazing interactions with these larger than life personalities, whether it be big wrestlers or movie stars, just intersecting with what his father was doing in the wrestling business. Um, you add in also just a beautiful story of diversity with, you know, the two backgrounds that DJ comes from, um, you know, with you have the Polynesian side, you have the African American side. It was just a really great opportunity that we felt was to tell a fun story, um, kind of uplift people in with hope of seeing like even when times are the worst, you can kind of stick it through and you can a lot of times still achieve a version of your dream, if not the ultimate dream. So it was too, too, too many opportunities there to be able to tell this story. And once we were in a position with our production company to do it, um, you know, we jumped on it and, and we've really been happy with the result. 
it surely has been happy to be happy with that result because the results have been really good. And it's such a fun show too because it really delves into his childhood days and also through his high school days and then getting into his college, University of Miami, the U, and getting into yeah. those days <laughs> a little bit and there'll be a little bit more coming up on that. To do it that way, when you all were thinking about this show and just coming up with the idea and saying, look, let's be authentic with this. Yeah, we're going to have fun and there's going to be some times here and there, but it really is authentic. I wanted to talk about the authenticity of it. Yeah, you know, well, and so we, you know, I'll, I'll take credit for, we had the idea to tell this great Dwayne Johnson story, but the true kind of masterminds behind the device that they did it, that's why that's why you see got the best partners in the business, and you know we were so fortunate to connect with Anachka Khan and Jeff Chang, who um, are brilliant showrunners, brilliant storytellers, and you know they really looked at holistically all these these stories we were telling them, saying, look, these are some of the things that have happened in DJ's life, and this is what we want to be able to achieve. And they came up with this wonderful format of tracking three timelines, so that you know the audience could kind of have. This pair, these parallel journeys of his evolution through all different periods of his life, and then it lets us also broaden the show in terms of like you get a little taste of the wrestling, you get a little taste of the sports, you know, you get a little taste of the home life. And so when they came up with this really fun device of tracking the three timelines, we said, "Oh man, that that's that that's the one that made sense because it allowed us to tell." in a very organic way, a bigger version of his story, um, and also track how they go, and then I think it allows us to progress the storyline, you know, knock on wood, if the audience uh, will have us continue telling the story, that we can kind of grow with these three actors as we progress through his timelines of, of, of the journey he's had. So um, Jeff and, and Notch did an amazing job of cracking that, you know, and, and the minute they pitched it right away, uh, that's when we knew we were on the right track, and then you know the storytelling all started to fall into place uh, really nicely after that. And Hiram, as an executive producer, and I know you're hands-on because you get involved in all the projects that you're part of, what do you see or what have been your roles specifically for this project? Sure, well, you know, well, this it was the, the initial part, too, was, was just finding the right team, right? Finding the right partners. Uh, that could do this story justice and do it right in the tone we wanted to. You know, obviously we always have big ambitions. Um, you know, but as, when, when you when you EP something like this, you're really you're in in it. You know, all the way because it's it's our baby, right? You know, we care about this. We want to tell this story right. So whether it be from putting the team together to then just working with Jeff and Notch as they crack the story to figuring out now, um, okay, COVID just hit. How do we shoot this in in, in a pandemic? world, right, where, where the world is kind of shut down and, and we're trying to be able to tell the story. So all that process of, of just getting the show made, making sure we can do it, finding our talent, making sure we get, can get them because a lot of our talent is international. Um, you know, then the, the logistics of, you know, where are you going to shoot it, marketing it, the, the whole process, it's really, you know, we, we take great pride in, in getting in the weeds on something like this, and especially when you're dealing with a project that is so special. Uh, to the team and obviously to DJ, um, there's no shortcuts in how you do it, right? You want to do the best version of it. And, and I think, you know, the steps we've taken have, have ended up giving us something we're very proud of. Well, he's very proud of his family, and rightfully so. But I would think this would be like a huge major deal because it's not only delving in his life, but it's delving into his family lives. And there's ups and downs along the way and relationships and hardships and a lot of comedy, too, a lot of fun. I would think that really was like, hey, guys, we like to do everything right, but this one, we really got to hit a home run and do this properly. I would think that would be a concern for you, Brian, Danny, and obviously Dwayne. Yeah, uh, uh, 100%. And look, you know, the, the one nice thing we had on our side in being able to tell some of these stories is, look, and obviously we know we're, we're um, a network-friendly show, you know, for for big audience, but... There's this nice thing where it's like we can take his characters a little bit into the depths because the fans know he's going to turn out all right. You right? I mean, he's Dwayne Johnson. Like he, he, you know, it, it came out well on the other side, so that allows us to to give his character some hard times and show the truth of some of those really challenging moments that happened. And and through that too, just to be able to honor all these people in his life who've meant so much to him. So whether that's 
shining a light on the wrestling business that is so special to us and obviously, you know, is, was, was the major platform that allowed DJ to then just step forward into becoming the biggest entertainer in the world or, you know, to his family, to his father, to Atta, um, you know, to, to the, the Polynesian culture, to just be able to shine a light on all these things and, and really pay homage to them in a, in a charming, beautiful way in this story. You know, I got to say, we had a, a lot of these amazing moments through the development of it. And I mean, I look, I, I remember the first time we got on a Zoom with Stacy, who plays Atta in, in the show. And, you know, me and DJ were Zooming with her and just this overwhelming. And she was just so grateful for the opportunity, you know, to be on a show like this. You know, she felt she hadn't always had these chances. Loved that we did it. And then, you know, Atta joined on the Zoom with us. And then when they saw each other, they just started crying. And it was just, it was just this beautiful synergy. And, it, you know, so many of those situations happened when Uli, you know, who plays, you know, the 20-year-old version of DJ Get On, it, again, it was an emotional moment. There was just, there's always been a lot of heart in this project. And combined with just a, a gratefulness for the opportunity of being able to shine light on these cultures, um, you know, on, on, on Rocky's side to be able to do that with Joseph Lee, it's just constantly DJ and I would just be looking at each other and, and, you know, and we'd circle on with Brian and Danny and just be like, man, this is, what a special project this is and how fortunate are we to be able to do, to do this and, and bring it to, to the world. So um, it's really been a rewarding process the entire way. And, um, yeah, every, every day we kind of pinch ourselves and like, man, I can't believe we're making a show. We're making it about your life, D. How crazy is that? <laughs> you mentioned horror, and that is, I think, the pivotal point of the show. And to have the actors on board and have share that genuine heart is such so key not only the actors but behind the scenes and i'm wondering hiram i don't know how much of the curtain you can pull back and it's okay either way but i'm wondering when when the decision came to go with nbc and nbc go with you all were there other possibilities could this have been of a netflix or hulu because those are so big too these days i don't know if you can address that or, or talk a little about that no sure you know i think when Doing this project and as we were developing it, um, you know, there's first of all, there's always been great synergy with NBC and Universal. That's, you know, the way we look at it. That's where a lot of our careers in this industry started, right? When whether when DJ did The Mummy Returns for Universal or Scorpion King being his first movie, you know, Scorpion King was the first movie that I had ever been on. Um, you know, there's so there's there was something that just made sense, kind of I think in the the circle of life of being able to tell the story there. And when we presented it to them, you know, they did something where they're just like, we'll take it and we're putting it straight to series. Like they wanted it as much as we wanted someone to want this and love this. They just got it. And sometimes you just don't even have to go shop it around when you're in a situation like that. You can just go and, you know, they, they, they stopped us in the middle of the pitch. They're like, we love this so much. We want to put this straight to series. This fits exactly the kind of storytelling we want to do. And um, we never looked back. They've been the perfect partner for us, the perfect home for us. They knew exactly the kind of show they were making. They did everything that we needed to support us as filmmakers and storytellers to make the best version of the show. Um, and I think you can really feel that on, uh, in the finished product, just that there's a lot of love and support behind it. And um, we're just thrilled that we were able to land it there and that, and that they showed as much passion and desire for it as we had in making it. Well, and in making this, is this one of those projects where Dwayne and yourself and Brian, Danny, or just everybody involved is really looking at each script and going over each script? Or is it a, a little more freedom in that regard when it comes to the script writing? Or no, you guys are really hands-on when it comes to that. Oh, no, we're, we're very hands-on. Um, you know, we're, we're very hands-on. And obviously because, you know, it's, it, it always depends on the project. Sometimes, you know, if you're telling a story that, is everyone's story. Well, there's interpretations, but at the end of the day, this is, this is DJ's story. So we're extremely hands-on with it because we know all these stories. We're the ones who are telling, you know, our partners these stories so that they can go and kind of create a great story around it. But um, there's just, this isn't one of those projects that you can ever be hands-off. Fortunately, we're, we're, that's just not how we function as a production company, that we're hands-off on anything. But if there was ever a project that you definitely weren't going to be hands-off on, uh, it was this one, just because there's so much nuance um, in, in, in subtlety in a lot of things that happen. And it's very important for us to be very accurate in a lot of these scenarios because whether it's honoring, you know, the, the wrestling business, the football business, you know, like Miami, 
um, you know, DJ's family. It's just you want, we want to make sure we're doing everything right and we're telling the right versions of the story. And sometimes, of course, you're, you're taking a little creative liberty to bridge some gaps, but at the core of all this, there's, these are just true stories that we're, you know, we're, we're bringing to a, a big audience and we, and we want to make sure that they're all right. And I'm watching these shows in this series and yes, it is DJ's life, of course, it's Dwayne's life. And I look at it, part of it as the star his father wanted to be, but also the greatness of his mom, the real star of the family. And I just wanted you to talk a little bit about Atta and just the wonderful, beautiful person she is. And now everybody's, I know Atta and I know the kind of person she is, but now the world is getting to see the kind of person that she is too. And just the strength that she has and, and family and, and what she means to Dwayne, what she means to all of you. Yeah, and look, I mean, I think when we were talking about this show, always from the beginning, we knew at the core of this was that the core of this, it was a, it was a story really about DJ and Atta, right? Like that was the foundation and the heart of this, of, you know, best friends from the beginning, and to this day, you know, Atta's always with DJ, you know, and she's, you know, the, any room lights up when she comes in there, and right away she'll whoop out, you know, a picture from her purse, and she's got all these pictures of DJ of all different ages, like, not only she's mom, but she's his biggest fan, and we always just thought, look, this is going to be the foundation of this incredible story, um, the, his, his love for his mother and the way they work together, so... Um, to be able to showcase that and the complexities of this journey that all of them went through with, you know, whether it be his grandmother or in Rocky and, and as they moved all around the country, as they kind of weathered this storm of, you know, wrestling and when times were good and when they weren't good and how ultimately it was always a family coming together to make ends meet. Um, it was just something very charming there and to be able to highlight Atta in that and kind of her positivity and, you know, that, that, that kind of mana that she always exudes where she's just always smiling and she's always happy. And, you know, she always, if there's a moment that she can sing because she knows it's going to make people feel better, uh, we wanted to get that into the show. And I think Stacy, you know, from the first time we ever met Stacy, Stacy really captured that. She, she tapped into that. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, from where she lives and, and what she was, she, you know, she's a chief among her people over in, uh, you know, um, in the country. I believe she's from New Zealand. Uh, you know, it's just, it just made sense right right over there, um, and I, I think it was one of those things that the first time we camera tested her and the first time we saw her, her and Atta kind of click and talk together, we knew that she was a perfect actress to bring that, that energy and, and warmth um, of Atta to life on, on the screen. Well, it's interesting, too, to me that the sense that this show, coming around when it has come with us dealing with COVID and just trying to get a break from things and having the story told and having some fun with it as well. And then the cast and the diversity and in using different talents from other cultures, Polynesian, Samoa, uh, African-American, coming at a time too where things are happening a lot in the world. You addressed it somewhat, but it's just so important. The show is about this family with different cultures, different heritage, and to have people involved, actors and actresses present that as well, I think lends to the authenticity itself. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Look, it was one of the things we were so excited about was to be able to shine a light on these cultures and, you know, provide opportunities for um, talent that maybe isn't getting the typical opportunities they would, right? You know, to be able to sit there and be on a big you know, network TV show. Um, and that was something that was expressed to us from pretty much all of our talent, where they were just, not only were they excited to do this and be a part of it, but just thankful for the opportunity because, you know, it's, you know, actors maybe in New Zealand or, or, you know, Australia or wherever we were, we were finding our great talent, we're saying, look, there's just not as many opportunities for us to get a shot to be on a big NBC TV show or a big network TV show. So being able to do that, being able to properly shine a light on, um, you know, those cultures was key to us. And um, also essential just because we wanted to be authentic to the world we were showing, right? So it's not easy to find actors that can play Wayne Johnson. Uh, and we scoured the globe to do it. But, I mean, I think, you know, 
we were able to find some really great options. And, you know, Adrian Bradley and Uli, have, are, they do exceptional jobs. Uh, I think each of them kind of captures that essence um, uh, that DJ shines. But it truly does take an army to represent a Dwayne Johnson. I'll tell you that. It's, it's not an easy process. <laughs> not easy at all. Hiram, you, you can tell us. Did Kevin Hart try out for one of the Young Rock parts? He did. He, he did. He tried to sneak in there, but um, but we couldn't afford him. We just couldn't afford him. So we said, on the, on the next one, my friend, <laughs> on the next one, we'll try. <laughs> he had the right height. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I didn't do that to Kevin. That's so, that's so good. Oh, my gosh. All right, a couple more questions, Simon. We'll let you go. Sure. Hey. The University of Miami, the U, it's all about the U. And it, obviously Dwayne's football playing days at a great time. Danny was there during that time on the crew team, the rowing team. You ended up being at the U also during great football times. Just what is that like, bringing that part of his life and having the U out there focused as well with this show? Oh, it's, it's you know, look, it's, it's so exciting, and especially you know during those years when 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 the U was really rocking and rolling, and and to be able to touch on that that pivotal time in in college football history, right, where Miami was just on fire. You know, we have amazing kind of uh, talent that's crossing paths over there. You know, where you know uh, this Ray Lewis is touching base over there, and like Dino Toretta, and just all these guys from back in the day to be able to do these situations where you're touching on them and you're kind of seeing them over there. It was just fun to bring it back to life and also recreate the U from back then, you know, that kind of nitty-gritty gym that we had. Um, it was awesome, and it's one of those things, you know, Danny and I always smiled about it because obviously we have so much love for the U, and to be able to bring that back to life and showcase it at a time when it was in its heyday, it's really special. And again, it's a nice little tip of the cap to um, something that means so much to all of us over here, obviously all of us having graduated from there. And, and, and really kind of all come together via the U. You know, it's, it's, it's a very special thing for us to be able to represent that. Now you mentioned Ray Lewis and then Gino Toretta. And then, of course, Dwayne was battling it out with Warren Sapp. <laughs> oh, my God. So, But it's, it's curious in this sense. Have you heard from some of the former UM guys? And also, did they want to be part of the show in some way? <laughs> yeah, you know, look, we, we went and we, you know, especially because of the relationships there, you know, we touched base with all these guys and told them, look, we're going to, you know, we're making this show, and we're excited to, to pop you in there. And they were just thrilled with it. You know, from them to the wrestlers, everyone was just so excited to be a part of the show, especially because they knew that they were being shown in such a, a good light. It, it was really just a love letter to all these pieces of DJ's history. Um, you know, we had fun with the idea of putting, you know, sap in there and the idea of here comes this, this uh, unassuming tight end. Uh, who gets recruited to Miami, who someday ends up becoming like the greatest defensive tackle ever. So uh, it's just really, it, it's fun to, to show the world how many of these incredible personalities and individuals cross paths with DJ on his rise to becoming this, this you know, this megastar that he is. And, um, you, know, we always, you know, we always alluded to it. We said this is a very Forrest Gumpian aspect of DJ's life where you would never know that, you know, he's hanging out with Andre the Giant as a kid and he's crossing paths with Warren Sapp in college that, you know, it's, and, you know, what happens later, you know, you imagine the, the people that he was crossing paths with when he's in Calgary and so forth. So it's just a really fun aspect of DJ's life that was always going to be essential to telling this story. Well, I hope we get to see Dwayne sacking FSU great New York Nick Charlie Ward. That's the moment we all know. That's the moment he would decide to become a Nick. And to leave the uh, league playing football. That was a defining moment, right? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hiram, this has been so much fun. I'm wondering, will we – oh, I don't, Hiram, are we – I don't even know if it's out there yet or if you're even allowed to say. Are we looking at future seasons of Young Rock? Is that potentially possibilities for plans? You know, look, if, if they're uh, uh, if the fans want it, you know, they, they're the ones who decide if, if we're able to go another round. Uh, you know, I know our, our ratings have been wonderful. Um, we're doing really well with it. NBC's talking about it, and I think, you know, the, there's there's a hunger from the fans. So, knock on wood, we're going to be having those conversations soon. Um, because, look, you know, we got, we have to figure out how we, how we put the queen of it all, the one that I feel like the mastermind of all the greatness that happens that is – Danny Garcia, we got to we got to figure out who you cast to represent the queen of it all. Um, 
in there, which which is going to be so much fun, and start figuring out what those stories would be. So, so knock on wood, we'll be having those conversations soon, and um, uh, uh, and and we're we're we're, we're talking about what that next season could look like. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned Danny because I was going to ask you that, but I'll now you meant you answered that, so I'll go to this. Could we see Young Hiram and Young Rock? <laughs> no, you you never know. That's the fun. I always take pride being behind the camera. Um, you know, uh, my my goal is just making sure I tell DJ story. But you never know if they can find someone uh, big enough and bald enough. I uh, watch well, I had hair back then, so if they can find someone lanky enough with a fluffy enough head of hair, then maybe we got a shot of seeing a, a young version of me on there uh, tripping around. <laughs> see, I was gonna go with. A younger Billy Zane, a younger Vin Diesel, or Freddie Prince Jr. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All of them would. It would be a great honor for me if any one of those guys even considered it for a minute before they passed. So I appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then who knows? Then maybe we could have a spinoff of Young Hiram or the Garcias. Exactly, right? My mom would love that show. That's the one person who would be watching. Mom would love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And and then also it's so cool because we can see in the future of Young Rock 2 the presidential campaign of Dwayne the Rock Johnson in 2032. Sit down interview about his life, setting the stage for Young Rock on NBC. That was pretty cool. Hiram, do you remember whose idea that was? Was that a collaboration? No, oh, again, that, that's the brilliant of our, of our partners, Nanachka Khan and Jeff Chang. They came up. You know, we were really looking for an authentic, organic way to, like, utilize DJ in the show uh, because he actually, you know, we're like, oh, there's probably not need for him to be in the show that much. And they really wanted to figure out how to get, it there in, um, get him in there in a fun way. And, you know, they came up with this fun device where they're like, look, you know, everyone keeps talking about this. There's, you know, there's always this hunger and questions about, like, hey, is you know, is DJ ever going to run? Would he run? He would be such a good president. And then we said, you know, how fun would it be to play off of that, of what the fans talk about so much, and just create this fun scenario. And then, you know, we loved it. We thought, oh, look, it's fun. It's a, it's a wink to the audience. Um, you know, it's always coming up on his feeds. And so once they cracked that, it just it felt like an authentic way to work him in. And you could then understand why someone, you know, why his storyline would be told like this, where we're just catching all these glimpses of these different parts of his life um and from there there we are now right uh, we got here but really that's that's uh, again just another part of the brilliance of our partners that we're able to come up with that in such a clever way to, to get them into the show well we're coming up to the end time wise and i want to get to the last couple of questions here so when rock does become president when dwayne johnson becomes president <laughs> my thought is or my question is what cabinet position Will Hiram Garcia take Secretary of State, Chief of Staff, something else? I, I don't know. You know, I'm so, so not savvy on the political side. If there's a salsa dancing ambassador, huh. I'll take that one. I, I will gladly be the, the global ambassador to all uh, happiness and salsa dancing. That, that may be something that I'm, I'm, I'm very equipped for. But other than that, I'm really going to have to sit down and think of it because there's a lot of stories i got to tell my friend. There's movies and there's shows to be made. <laughs> Um, you know, that's always a great joy, so we'll, we'll really have to sit down and think about it. <laughs> Photographer to the president. <laughs> there you go, there you go. It, could we see another photo book? You are excellent with your photography. You had a book that you did. It was outstanding. The Rock, Through the Lens, his life, his movies, his world, St. Martin's Press, color and black and white photos. Are you thinking about doing a photo book? Another photo book, and possibly with Young Rock, are you taking any photos? You know, I, look, I, it's something I always loved the idea of, and, and the great thing about, you know, Through the Lens was it was just a really organic process. I just always am taking pictures, taking tons of pictures on set now, you know, as we're doing our, our superhero movie, Black Adam, here in, um, in Atlanta. But, you know, if, I think if the opportunity comes, I'll jump at it. I, I kind of like things just to flow naturally. You know, obviously, we're, we're fortunate to be as busy as we are, so... I just try and capture what, what comes across my path. And, and, and if I'm able to do another book, I'd love to. I'm not sure what it would be on. You know, I have some friends that, you know, in the business that we always joke around. They're like, oh, I'd love you to shoot me and do something like that. And, and if it ever comes together, I'd love it. But I'm always keeping my, always keeping my uh, eyes open for that chance because it truly is a, a passion of mine. So hopefully one day I'll be able to do another, another round because it was, it was a lot of fun to make that book. And, um, and I, I've just been overwhelmed with a positive response from it. 
He has many passions and he does them all very well. Thank you so much, Hiram, as always. And hey, go Young Rock and go XFL. Absolutely. Jim, thank you so much as always, man. It's such a pleasure to talk to you and, and to do these interviews uh, for our Miami fam. So uh, it, it, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Stay safe over there. And, and thanks again. Hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much.